In this demonstration, we will focus on two houses having both mounted a solar receiver on their side. Solar irradiation is converted into a dissipated flux using these receivers. Both receivers have wavelength specific properties, with a cut up wavelength being lambda c. Its characteristics are shown in this graph, where it becomes apparent that the emissivity of the receiver is thus higher before the cutoff wavelength. Furthermore, some properties about the heat flux, irradiation angle, temperatures, and geometric characteristics are given. Also, it is noteworthy that the receivers do not transmit any radiation. Besides that, all surface radiate diffusely, the receivers are no gray radiators, heat conduction and convection are negligible, and we can disregard radiant heat flows from the surroundings. In the first task, we are asked to determine the heat flux Q.1, which is dissipated by receiver 1. At this point, we neglect the influence of the second receiver. We can determine this flux from an inner energy balance around the receiver. The general inner energy balance reads that the temporal change of inner energy is equal to the absorbed incoming radiation minus the emitted radiation and the dissipated heat flux. So we define the boundaries of our control volume such that it falls just inside the receiver and we do not have to take into account the effect of reflection and transmission, but only absorption and emission. So the receiver will receive and absorb radiation from the sun, but we have to split this into a short wavelength and a longer wavelength term because the absorptivity is not the same for radiation with a wavelength shorter than the cutoff wavelength and radiation with a wavelength longer than the cutoff wavelength. So part of this energy will be dissipated and used for the generation of electricity, for example. But since the receiver is at some temperature, it will also emit radiation. These terms also have to be split into a short wavelength and long wavelength component because the emissivity depends on the wavelength of the emitted radiation. So if we put these terms into the energy balance, we get the following. The next step will be finding the definition of all relevant terms. The first term to define is the short wavelength radiation from the sun being absorbed. This yields from the short wavelength absorptivity multiplied by the solar radiation density being perpendicular to the receiver and the area of the receiver itself. However, the radiation of the sun is not perpendicular to the receiver area, but for our expression, we need this perpendicular component. This is where the irradiation angle comes to play, and we can use trigonometry to determine this perpendicular component, which yields from the solar density multiplied by the cosine of this angle. Furthermore, from Kirchhoff's law, it yields that the short wavelength absorptivity is equal to the short wavelength emissivity. However, we do not know yet at this point which part of the irradiation spectrum of the sun falls within the short wavelength spectrum. The total spectrum can be seen as a black body, which yields from the Boltzmann constant multiplied by the temperature in Kelvin to the power of 4. This factor f tells us which part of this spectrum falls within the short wavelength region. To determine this factor, the following relation, which is given in the book, can be used. This describes the black body radiation in a spectral range from zero to a specific wavelength. To read this table, we should determine the product between the cutoff wavelength and the temperature of the receiver, which yields to have a value of 6000. Reading this table, we find that factor F has a value of about 0.74. We can do the same for the absorption of the long wavelength radiation, where the factor F now should cover the range from the cutoff wavelength to infinity. This yields from the difference between factor F from zero to infinity, which is basically equal to one because it covers the entire spectrum, minus factor F from zero to the cutoff wavelength. Then we have to define the short wavelength emitted radiation by the receiver which is from the product of the short wavelength emissivity, factor F again, which we have to redetermine, the Boltzmann constant, and the temperature of the receiver in Kelvins to the power of 4. To determine this factor F, we have to find the product of the cutoff wavelength and the temperature of the receiver, which should have a value of 400. If we read this table, we find that for a value of 1000, factor F is almost approximately 0, so therefore, we can assume that for a value of 400, factor F will have a value of about zero.
Then we have to define the long wavelength emitted radiation by the receiver in a similar manner as we did before. Where factor F again should cover the spectrum from the cutoff wavelength to infinity, which yields from the difference between the factor F from zero to infinity minus factor F spanning from zero to the cutoff wavelength. And again, factor F spanning from zero to infinity basically covers the entire spectrum and therefore its value is equal to one. If we substitute all definitions into the energy balance, we find the heat flux dissipated by receiver one. In the second task, we're asked to determine the fuel factor from receiver one to two. The distance between those two receivers is distance D. They both have a length L and of course a width W. So we can consider them to be two flat plates, which are at the distance D away from each other. Therefore, we can use the following chart to determine the fuel factor. To determine this fuel factor, we first should determine a ratio between X and D, which in this case is the ratio between the length of the receiver and the distance between them, which yields a value of 0 0.5. And therefore we can draw here a line in the chart. Then we need to determine a ratio between Y and D, which is the ratio between the width of the receiver and the distance between the two of them, which gives a value of 0 0.3. And therefore the lines of X over D and Y over D do intersect at this point. So now from the vertical axis, we can see what the value of the fuel factor from one to two is. And if we read this chart carefully, we find a value of about 0 0.045. Then in the third task, we are asked to determine the surface brightness in the short and long wavelength range for the surface of receiver two. In this sub problem, we can assume that the surface brightness of receiver one in the short and long wavelength ranges are known. And due to its orientation, no sunlight directly impinges on receiver two. So to tackle this problem, we'll first write out the general definition of the surface brightness for the short and long wavelength ranges which both yield from the radiation being reflected, transmitted, and emitted. In the second step, we have to define all elements that are given within the definition of the surface brightness. So for the reflection term, receiver two can only receive any radiation from receiver one. So therefore, some of the radiation received from receiver one is being reflected by receiver two. The radiation received by receiver two from receiver one yields from the product of the fuel factor from one to two, multiplied by the surface brightness of receiver one. However, the reflectivity is not given, but we do know the emissivity, and it is also known that the transmissivity is equal to zero. So from the property that the sum of the reflectivity plus the emissivity plus the transmissivity should be equal to one, we find that the reflectivity is equal to one minus emissivity minus the transmissivity, but the transmissivity is zero, so this cancels out. And then lastly, the surface brightness of surface one can be expressed as the density of the surface brightness multiplied by the area of the receiver one. Then we have to define the term describing the radiation that is being transmitted. But since it's given that the transmissivity is equal to zero, we can directly write that this component will be equal to zero as well. And then as a third, we have to define the component describing the emitted radiation, which is from the product of the emissivity for the short wavelength, multiplied by factor F for the short wavelength region, multiplied by the Boltzmann constant and the temperature of receiver two in Kelvin to the power four. To determine factor F again, we have to use this table. And since it's known that the temperature of receiver two is lower than the temperature of receiver one, we already know that the product of the cutoff wavelength multiplied by the temperature of receiver two will be smaller than 400. And since we already stated in question B that for a value of 400, factor F will be zero. In this case, it will also be zero. So therefore the emission component for the short wavelength region is negligible as well. And we state it to be equal to zero. The reflection component for the long wavelength region can be expressed in a similar manner as for the short wavelength region. Similarly, again, the transmissivity term is equal to zero because the receiver still doesn't transmit any radiation. 
And then as a third, the emission component used from the product of the emissivity for the long wavelength region, multiplied by factor F spanning from the cutoff wavelength to infinity, multiplied by the Boltzmann constant and the temperature of receiver two to the power of four. And since we already saw that factor F from zero to the cutoff wavelength for receiver two is equal to zero, the term in between brackets used to be one, and therefore the long wavelength emission component can be written as a product of the emissivity for the long wavelength, the Boltzmann constant, and the temperature to the power of four. And since we have now found all required elements for the definition of the surface brightness, we can substitute them into the definition and do some rewriting. And therefore, we find the following expressions for the surface brightnesses for the long and short wavelength regions. So this demonstration showed how an inner energy balance can be used to determine heat flux dissipated by receiver one. It showed how to determine the fuel factor using one of the fuel factor graphs. And it showed how to determine the surface brightness in the short and long wavelength range for receiver two. I would like to thank you for your attention and see you next time.